Hey there, it's Jenny from Southern Savers. Glad to have you guys join me and hope you guys had a good week off um, on the break we took last week. So we are gonna talk vacations, but we can also talk any questions you have as uh, I know we rolled out changes to um, the site this week and changes stress people out so we can talk changes and they're not that big. They're really fun in my opinion. I hope that you guys find them fun too, but we can talk any other questions you have. If you are new uh, to the Hangout, you click the little plus, red plus sign down the corner to be able to open up the chat window and ask any questions that you have. Um, and I will answer them and other folks will usually get to them before I do too. So you'll have lots of answers to whatever your questions are. Uh, and we can go anywhere. So it doesn't in any way have to stay vacations. If you've got CBS questions or Target questions, whatever you want to throw at me. It kind of makes the night more fun. Um, but we are going to start with vacations because it's good to have a topic as you guys get questions in the queue for me to answer. And I think vacations are kind of timely because a lot of folks are on spring break right now. Um, but for me, spring break's like this little tiny taste of what I want the summer to be. So you start to get into that summer planning mode. We just started pulling up our calendar this week to be like, is there a time that we could go away? I don't know. You know, all of that in the in the back of your mind. Now, for super good deals, I have to confess you're a little late to the game. So if you're wanting to go on a cruise, if you're wanting to go um, kind of big in that sense, even all-in-one type vacations, a lot of those, your best deals are sometimes a year out or super last minute. So we're in this... 60 day window now and 60 day windows aren't always the best deals for those big kind of all-inclusive vacations and that includes cruises that includes your you know, you know wherever you're headed type resorts um all in one meaning that it's your lodging it's your food it's everything you would do if you've not ever done those there are definitely deals out there but at this point for summer, you're probably gonna actually get a better deal if you wait and you just go very last minute. Um, and it's doable, you know, you can actually book a cruise up to two days before. A lot of them will cut off um, at the two day mark because they now have to turn over their inventory and uh, manifest lists to um, the port authorities and whatnot with all of the federal watch warnings and whatnot, they you know scan all the lists. But as long as your book can still go, and there are some very good deals for those last minute cruises, especially in cruise land, because they want every room to be full. So being very last minute at this point is your best bet. And by the way, just so we hit on it, if you're looking for a deal on Disney, it doesn't really happen. The best deal on Disney cruises is to book really far out. They tend to only get more expensive as the cruise gets closer and there doesn't tend to be any vac vacancies on the ships. They're uh, good at what they do and they stay really packed. They also don't have near the number of ships that all the other cruise lines have. So it's supply and demand and they definitely have it working in their favor. But the other cruise lines that are out there, there are some great deals to be had. Uh, especially going last minute and watching some of the last minute sites for those deals. One in particular that we like to watch is cruisedirect.com. And I'll stick that in chat just in case you're curious. Um, cruisedirect.com. Orbitz will also have last minute um, cruises on theirs, but Orbitz doesn't always have the lowest rates. And then, um, Travel agents can help you find some too, um, but not use the, you know, sell out, we just want to pack the room and have somebody in it kind of rates. Um, but they can still get you some good discounts too if you go through uh, a travel agent to book them. Um, is Disney best priced during certain seasons of the year? And if so, which season is it best as far as price? So Tanya, before, I answer, are we talking Disney Cruise or Disney like Orlando? Because um, it's two different boats. In terms of Disney Cruise, you wanna look at where you wanna go and then look 
as kind of shoulder season as possible. And that's the case with any cruise line uh, and destination. So um, let's talk, you know, Alaska, for instance, which is like everyone when we retire, we all want to go on an Alaskan cruise. Shoulder seasons are the cheaper options because it's getting cold at night. It's still plenty tolerable during the day, but cold at night. So early May and late September, much cheaper than going in July. You're going to see those same kinds of shoulders in other areas of the world. Keep in mind the Caribbean and further south areas, their shoulders are fine because we will all take a Caribbean cruise any time of the year. The shoulders to watch there tend to be school seasons. If I can go, if I can book any cruise, for instance, or any all-in-one in the Caribbean. So let's take it out of cruise land and go all-in-one Caribbean. We just want to look at a destination type location. And this can apply to Disney too, just uh, anywhere. Always cheaper to travel the week before school lets out, if that's possible, um, or the week after school starts back. Uh, a great time to hit the beach is the week of Labor Day weekend, or in that whole week. Labor Day weekend starts your week and the week following because so many schools start back the day after Labor Day. Uh, especially up north. So if we're hitting the beach on September 2nd, September 3rd, yes, it's late, but you could do that. If you don't have children or if you're in our boat, we homeschool. We love off-season vacations because we can homeschool earlier. Uh, we can change up our schedule in any way we want, but we can get the really, really great rates to do that. You know, To compare this to beach, if we're talking about renting a beach house for $1,500 for the entire week, the same beach house the next week, and this is, you know, top May, week before Memorial Day weekend, $1,500. Week after Memorial Day weekend, it's now officially summer in their book, um, it's doubled in price. Go into mid-June and it's tripled. Um, so always want to go, not necessarily because of weather in that situation, it could be the same exact weather. We could be talking one week to the next. It's school-based. It's how many people supply and demand are wanting that spot. It's going to apply to cruises too. So whatever we're looking at, find for when supply and demand is higher or lower. Um, and, you know, obviously if your kids are in public school, your options are a little limited, but you could talk to the school about what your options are for travel during school time. If you were to miss certain days, could we count some of them as you know, family organized field trips, whatnot. I know that can be a massive hassle uh, and I'm not an expert at it because we have only homeschooled. Um, but I did go to the public school system my whole life. I remember the headache of it all. Um, but that would be the biggest tip is when is different for every location in terms of whether that location has a shoulder, but most locations outside of seasonal happens to be supply and demand, and that's usually related to school schedules. People take their work holidays when their kids are off. So school is dominating all of it. In terms of going to Disney Orlando, I don't want to go the week of spring break. Uh, it's crazy. So they start to say spring break's different. You get college spring break and you get public school spring break. So folks will say pretty much the whole month of March. I don't want to be there. If Easter runs late, you could be getting into the April, uh, into April, but a lot of times it's just the whole month of March. It's going to be a lot more busy than it is mid-February, early February, January. Those are quieter months because people are in school. Um, I, again, I know it's not always one that we can all work around, though. Um, hopefully that helps though in seasons you're looking for. So look at your kid's school schedule and then let's see what we can play with. Time that maybe we can work it out that we even get schoolwork to go. Like we're willing to do this from home if the teacher is willing to send the worksheets home. Obviously the younger your kids are, the easier this, that is to do. Um, okay, let me make sure I didn't miss any other questions going back up. Um, Tawana says, I have a coupon for 30% off motels. Should I ask first the price before I tell them that I have a coupon from the paper? And uh, you, the tricky part with coupons is reading the fine print. And if that 30% is off of the rack rate, 
uh, if, if it says anything like that, that it can't be paired with any promotions or any other discounts, they're going to want to give you 30% off the price. That's what rack rate is. It's not the discount. It is the, you walked in off the street and we just gave you the top price for a room. Um, so if it has any kind of fine print in it like that, it's, it's probably not the deal that you want it to be, but you could get them to quote it and then tell you that you have a, you know, then you say that you have a coupon and just see what their response is. Be ready for them to tell you that they can't um, honor both and then start to hunt. Um, that's where for me, I would start to let's head to um, tripadvisor.com. I, it, it's not where I would normally book from, but it has a fun feature um, that is also annoying, but fun in the sense of saving money. And that if I type in where I want to go and the dates that I want to go, it's going to open up like nine different windows to compare that location across all the different travel sites. So it's going to open up Orbitz and Priceline and Hotwire and all the ones that you can possibly think of. And then you can sit there and compare the price across all of them to make that you really do have the best price at wherever you decide to book. So call them and get them to give the rate and then give the coupon still book. I might just say, hey, can you know, um, give me a minute to think about it. I'll call you back. I, I wouldn't wait too long if you've got that person agreeing to a discount plus the 30% off. Um, but at least make sure we know what we're looking at online. Or you could possibly do that before you even call them since the, I can get an idea of what the rate's going to be long before I even pick up the phone um, by hunting around on some sites. Uh, in terms of hotels, that's a great one just for us to jump to, though. Saving on hotels. Uh, obviously, you know, we have a lot of places to search for hotel deals, but do remember that not, um, oh, and Amberly is saying Trivago also does this. So T R I V A G O dot com. Um, do remember that when you're looking at all of these sites for hotel deals, that some of the major chains don't actually use these sites. Uh, so if you are heading into an area and they've got Marriott hotels, I'm actually not going to find a Fairfield, uh, all of their lower end chains, they're not going to be on orbits. It's very rare to spot them on orbits and they usually only do that if they have a lot of vacancies. Uh, and a number of the hotel chains actually guarantee that you'll get the cheaper price through them. So before you just automatically book through the lowest one that you see through TripAdvisor or Trivago, always head on to the brand's site and search again. Um, because you might be surprised. The price may be significantly cheaper. It may be five bucks cheaper. But most of them do have a guarantee that they will have the lowest price, not the third place for the hotel. So it kind of changes up the way that a lot of us are used to booking a hotel because, I mean, you just get ingrained. I'm going to go to Orbitz and I'm going to book my hotel. But step back for a second before you do that. Um, if you find that they have the same price, then a, a site, to push it hard enough, but it's one that you should definitely be looking into using is Ebates. Uh, or a site that offers cash back like Ebates. So I can book hotels and I can get a portion of my booking rate back. And this is going to apply for all sorts of things that you do on vacation planning. Uh, so it's not just hotels. You can get a little bit of cash back on airlines. It's not nearly as much as it used to be for airlines. But hotels, we're usually talking 1% to 2%, sometimes higher. I'm trying to quickly... Um, get logged in so I can tell you what their current rates are. But what this means is I go through Ebates first and then um, my brain is having a hard time typing and talking. Um, I go through Ebates, then I search for wherever I wanted to book the ticket through. I search for Orbitz or Hotwire or, or whatever company it is that I'm looking at using. Uh, and then I click through that link to earn the cash back on my purchase. Um, so to play with this for two, um, Orbitz right now is offering up to 8% cash back. And that differs based on what we're doing. 
Um, so if I am, um, let's see, if I am booking a cruise on through Ebates, uh, then going to Orbitz, I'm going to get 8% back from the cruise, hotels 2% back, even cars, I'm going to get $3.75. Airlines is $2.25. It's not a flat percentage. It used to be years and years ago. Um, thank you, Amberly. Yes, ebates.com. So you head there. You have to set up an account. The first time you set it up, if you're brand new, you actually get a bonus for the first purchase that you make through them. But if I book my hotel through, and I mentioned Orbitz, but there are tons of travel sites that are through Ebates. So I book through Priceline or any of these other sites. I'm going to earn that back in my account as cash back. So I already got the best rate on the hotel that I could find across all of the sites that I searched. Then I went to Ebates and I got the cash back and the best price. The cash back is coming into your Ebates account and they're going to send you a check every quarter is when they send out checks of whatever you've earned as long as you've earned ten dollars um, most people don't have a problem with that especially if we're booking you know you're gonna go on a week-long vacation um, your three percent on your hotel is probably gonna be ten bucks or more uh, on whatever it is that you just booked so and we can do this for all sorts of things too Ebates isn't just travel by them um, but that's one option Amber Lee mentions too, and this is where I was going to go for bigger cities. So a lot of times lately, the deal is not in a hotel. And I'm just going to stick your comment up for everyone to see. Um, so apartments, uh, don't look past like Airbnb, HomeAway, all of those sites that are out there. There really are some great deals to be had. I'm heading to New York uh, for a conference in July for two nights. It's a little tiny trip. Where the conference is, uh, there's not actually any hotels near there. It's at the Chelsea Pier. Not a lot of hotels in the area. But there are a lot of Airbnb and home away, like one bedroom studios, even some two bedrooms. Um, if I could find someone to split the room with me, actually come out cheaper than a hotel room. Many times in huge cities, they come out a lot cheaper. And I know it seems very sketch because you've never seen these people and you're staying in their house. But keep in mind that a number of these places um, are specifically managed, like Amberly is mentioning, by property managers. You're not like kicking Joe out of his apartment for the night and you're sleeping in his bed. This is really an empty apartment that's used for this purpose and they do quite well for themselves, but they have a really, really great rate. And a lot of times the rates are also kind of negotiable. So if you're you know, not quite sure that you want to pay that much, you can always ask. You're working directly with the owner a lot of times, or, uh, but you can always throw that in. So for us, we use um, HomeAway or VRBO. They're the same exact company. Um, so VRBO, HomeAway.com, all the same. We use that if we go to the beach. And that's how we'll find a rental at the beach. Now, we only live like an hour and a half away. So beach for me isn't some massive, you know, 12 hour car ride. Um, we just had Charleston, which takes about an hour and a half to get there. We hang out for a few nights, we come home. Um, there are no hotels at the beach in Charleston, very few, if, if any, that I know of. So you have to do a rental. Um, and in our neck of the woods, going through VRBO, if you look for one managed by an owner, you can get a deal. Um, if I go super last minute, this was us, um, this time last year, our middle daughter was going to have surgery and we decided that we wanted a weekend at the beach before she was put in this crazy cast and on crutches, crutches in the beach just really don't work. We tried it. It's really hard. Um, so we wanted to do this before all of that. We went down for three nights, but like on Monday that we were going to do this on Thursday evening. I looked around on VRBO houses that were available that week and I actually told them like, hey, we're coming in. This is a family getaway before a daughter has surgery. Is there any kind of discount that we can get just for this three nights day that we would like to come in and get? And we ended up getting 50% off the rate that the owner was asking at the time. Now, yes, we had like extra sides to the circumstances, but, um, asking for last minute discounts and telling them, you know, we're not going to come in and trash your house. This isn't some kind of last minute, you know, party. 
uh, telling them who you are, it always sets them at ease and you can get discounts for doing that. So uh, I love last minute on VRBO slash home away. They're all owned by the same company. When you search, you end up at the same place in the same houses. Airbnb as well will do discounts directly with the owner. Um, so let's see. Um, and Josie is mentioning my other side to hotels. Yes, I do. We are Marriott Rewards members. We we travel a ton for conferences and workshops and whatnot that I teach. So it, it pays to be loyal. It really does. And if you're going to get a great rate, then even better. Marriott's got a lot of low end, I don't mean like one star, but uh, cheaper side hotels and you know the Renaissance or anything like that we're staying in the fair street or the residence in so we stay in their lower tier hotels all the time and you earn rewards points for it because we stay there all the time we have a Marriott rewards credit card so we earn more points right now we've got like 300,000 400,000 rewards that's enough to go stay in a hotel for like a month and a half for free because we stay so often. Um, so many times that can be actually, for some folks, a week at the beach. They have vacation rewards clubs that you can use your points on. Uh, and Marriott's not the only one that does this. Hilton has them as well. A lot of the major brands have rewards programs. And if you are big into travel, then getting their matching credit card is a huge way to up more rewards points to help you get those freebies. So Josie, I'm glad that you kind of took my advice on that one. Um, you do get extra free nights just for the credit card as well. Um, so it, it can be worth it if you're, you know, definitely looking into wanting a lot. And for us, it usually means at least one week away a year that we'll use. And the rest of the points just kind of sit there. Uh, we don't use them all the time. We um, also like to help some folks out. I shared on Instagram the other day that um, some friends of ours are hiking the Appalachian Trail. They started yesterday and they have five months ahead of them on the Appalachian Trail. We offered them Marriott points when they get near New York. The Appalachian Trail gets about 45 minutes or 45 minutes outside of Manhattan. And they've never been. So offered them if they hopefully can make it all the way there that we will um, get them two nights at a hotel because we have the points. Be glad to spend it to kind of reward them for making it that far. So it's fun to be able to have some to share when you've got a ton because you're you're, you're using the reward system to its max potential. Um, okay. Um, to jump into another question, um, plenty points. Uh, Cameron recently a three dollar offer at Exxon when buying ten dollars worth of gas. Uh, that was a special offer. Do I also earn point buying the gas there uh, when there's not an offer? I've looked, but I'm having trouble finding the answer. So Cameron, no, if you do, it's incredibly minimal on earnings for gas purchases. You do earn for um, all of the convenience store purchases, but the gas is, I mean, like a penny maybe on earnings, if anything. Uh, and even with redemption, we I have a ton of plenty points right now because of all the free pair products at Rite Aid that ended this past Saturday. So we stopped at an Exxon this past weekend and hoped to just make it completely free, but it still maxed um, the use at $25. It wouldn't let us use above $25 towards gas. So with gas, they've got a lot uh, more restrictions than they do on all the other items, you know, Macy's and Rite Aid that just don't exist. So I don't know at all if you do, it's tea tiny, not anything that you would wanna write home about. But if you go in and you start buying sodas or anything from inside, yes, you do earn there. Um, a, a very tiny portion, but much more than it would be in the gas side of things. And that's where a lot of times the special offers are too. Like that's a pretty awesome, uh, offer to get it off of gas, but most of the time if I look in my plenty account, I have the Exxon offers for $3 off of 15 of convenience store items. It's very rare for me to see a gas one, um, so they, they tend to kind of push that side a little bit harder um, with all of the Exxon promotions. Um,
Okay. Um, let's see. If someone wants to give Jonathan an email, y'all are welcome to chime in with one of your emails for um, Jonathan, or you can, um, for me, it's a very old email, but it's jenny at jamesandjennymartin.com. Um, but you can use that one if you'd like to for a refer. Um, if you, once you do get signed up, Jonathan, if you then refer folks, you get um, five or $10 to refer people well. Um, so it never hurts to pass it on to other friends and see who wants to sign up. Um, So I'm gonna stick Heidi's comment up, and it, it's a good reminder. So using third-party sites, hotels will not necessarily give you the type of room you booked. Um, they guarantee only that you'll have a room. So you may book a two-bedroom, or book a two-queen bed, non-smoking, but the hotel may put you in two doubles. So use caution when using the third-party sites. Yes, Heidi, I will say we've ran in, into that a few times too, um, that it's just a, you have a room and they need, they'll even say when you check in like, oh, well you have a such and such rate uh, and they aren't really too thrilled about it. Uh, but sometimes you can also call in advance. Um, if I know that we have a room and I need to make sure that it has enough room for all of us or when we had someone that was in a wheelchair for most of last year, calling to say, you know, we need to be in the handicap accessible room. Uh, uh, they were a little bit more willing to work with us on that one uh, without any issues, but sometimes just calling and saying, hey, you know, we're headed in, I just wanna make sure that everything's set in our room and this is what we have reserved can help if that's your concern, if you, you're just really not wanting to end up in a rough spot because the later you check in, you're kind of being left with whatever's left, uh, especially if a hotel is maxed out. But if I call earlier in the day and I kind of go ahead and get a room set aside for me on the phone, if they're willing to do that, then I'm not going to run into that problem when I finally get to the hotel at 7.30 at night because my name is technically already on a room. Um, so hopefully if you're in that boat and you're concerned, um, that that's an option is to call ahead. Um, so Heidi, uh, HomeAway owns VRBO. It's the same company. They bought them years ago. Um, yes, and Amberly's got another great thing. When you're dealing with any of these uh, vacation rental by owners or Airbnb, if your dates are flexible, let them know um, because they can kind of play around and also letting them know because if you're dealing with a property manager, a lot of them actually have other properties available too. So if you said, you know, I don't actually need them exactly these dates, you know, if you just wanted to fit me into something else that you have, um, maybe this one isn't available, can you help me find something that is? It's a great thing to kind of almost tell them everything so that they can really work with you the, the best, especially in a property manager side of things. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's great, Cameron. I'm not famous. I could take you in and show you all my dirty laundry. I like this corner of my house because it's incredibly clean. Um, but I'm glad that she can she could join us tonight. Um, so uh, I don't know what a pace bin is, Jonathan. Um, Okay, um, yeah, I can also stick them all up, but um, uh, we, we can stick any links up on the screen so that I can make them go live across the screen too. Um, okay, so we've kind of hit everyone's questions for now. I just wanna make sure I'm not leaving anyone way, way back as we have conversations. Um, VRBO, would be kind of the place that I would look first if you're going for a longer stay too, because typically a week at a hotel, you're going to go insane. You don't have a kitchen. You don't have the amenities that you're going to have in a house. Um, and looking in the VRBO world is actually going to be cheaper than a week in a hotel, not only on the cost, but on the amenities. If I have that extra space, I cook meals because we haven't even gotten to the meal side of a vacation, uh, but we have to eat and eating out 
all the time is incredibly costly, even in New York, where everybody eats out all the time. Uh, we want to be able to bring some of that in and do it from home. So um, in terms of grabbing a space, I, I don't want to, you know, not emphasize it enough. Going with a apartment or a house over a hotel can have many ways that it's saving you money. Um, hotel though for a short stay is probably the way to go. So short stay um, is not gonna be feasible in a, a vacation renter or an Airbnb. Most of them won't do a one night because getting it cleaned and turned around is too much work for a one night stay. So obviously we're in a hotel for things like that that's when we're going to start to look for the best rates calling around um, directly to the hotel and going directly to hotel websites on top of the third party sites just to make sure we're getting the best of everything we could. Um, so Heidi says a few weeks ago I mentioned about being stocked up for summer and what did I mean by that? Were we talking about specific products? Um, so I know you know we have certain bubbles of products that come on sale that aren't going to be on sale during the summer. I don't know if that's maybe where you were talking about. So like baking goods, we're, we kind of missed it. But well, you have till tomorrow. A lot of the sales that end tomorrow, except for Publix, who ran a weird sale and started it today, um, tomorrow. So uh, a lot of those would be your flours and sugars. All of your baking items are going to go off sale tomorrow in grocery stores and will be back on sale until little tiny bubble in July. I don't know if that was it or not. Um, and other thing, we're not going to see soup on sale all summer. We're not going to see is buy one get one at Bilo starting on Wednesday. It's really late to go sale, but come um, you know mid April, none of it anymore until late September. Um, so those are the key things. In terms of um, mustard, ketchup, all of that, that's actually all going to start coming on sale even more than we're already seeing it. And we've seen some free mustard already this year, but we're getting into grilling season. So that Memorial Day weekend, we're going to see sales all before, before that. And then the grilling starting the week before Memorial Day, grilling items will come on sale um, like May 21st around in that boat. That's the weekend before. All, from May 21st until after July 4th, almost till Labor Day, you're gonna feel like hot dogs are always buy one get one. It's just rotating which brand every single week. Uh, and we're gonna rotate through brands almost every single week. Chips are gonna stay cheap and soda is gonna stay cheap all of those months. Um, so we don't really need to go crazy on any of those. You're gonna see a ton of sales on them for a really long time. And then after Labor Day, they all go off sale for a little bit. So um, those are the key items to not stock up on really for summer. We don't need to, uh, but all of the other things that are on sale right now, that's what's not going to be on sale. Okay. Um, and let's talk a little bit more on eating because I mentioned a kitchen, obviously saving money on eating. The key things I would push for you to do are let's take with us if possible, the more expensive items versus saying, you know what, I'm just going to find a grocery store there and buy them there. Uh, if we're or anywhere that is uh, like a tourist trap, you're going to pay a ton of money to buy those groceries. Uh, there are usually mom and pop grocery stores in a lot of those places. They don't run national sales. They don't have BOGO sales. Um, so that's the first you or, um, national brand store, they're still going to have much higher prices than the same national brand store that's 30 minutes inland. Uh, so I don't really want to wait till the beach to go grocery shopping. I want to bring most of the expensive things that I can. So my ice chest is getting packed with meat. Uh, it's getting packed with uh, butters and cheese. Uh, and then some produce, if I can bring that from home, I'm going to save money. If if you're worried that it's not going to make it, then we buy the fresh produce there, but that's it's going to cost a lot more to do that. And then we take a Rubbermaid storage container 
and load it with as much as it can hold of um, our dry goods. So we pack cereals for breakfast. I'll pack Pop-Tarts for breakfast. I mean, it's, it's vacation. Uh, granola bars, any kinds of snacky foods that we can go ahead and have packed because I can be getting all of these things on sale weeks before we're traveling uh, and it's all packed in a bin ready to go as much as we can get in it. Uh, and plan out your meals. I'm not a mini planner in normal life. Uh, it kind of stresses me out because we don't end up eating whatever we plan to eat, but I am when we travel. So stick with some easy, easy travel meals. Tacos is always a go-to. Um, it was actually dinner tonight at our house, um, but it's a go-to when we travel. Spaghetti is a go-to. Chili can be a good one unless you're at the beach. Nobody wants chili when they're all sunburnt. Uh, pizza. Either, whether you do homemade pizza or you do frozen. Frozen pizza is hard to get there, so that's one of those we're going to buy it when we get there kind of items. Um, but pizza night can be fun too if you can get some deals or save up. This is what we do. Save up your Papa John's rewards points until vacation time and then use our rewards points while we're out of town. Um, but lots of options if we think simple meals that don't need a ton of spices, they just are things thrown into them because we're going to have to buy all that or bring really want to do that. My mother-in-law is our go-to chef. Whenever we travel, we tend to, if we go to the beach, we go with the entire family. And so she does a lot of our cooking and her one way on saving on spices is that she tends to put all of the spices she uses regularly in Ziploc bags and just brings those or has a blend. Like this is my go-to blend that I use on everything. It just comes in a Ziploc bag. Um, for the trip. So she brings those key things with her that she's going to need to. Um, we don't take her everywhere we go though. So for us, it's very simple, basic meals that aren't going to require much of anything. And keep in mind some of these places that you rent aren't even going to have salt and pepper in them. Um, so bringing them home is going to save you versus having to run back to the grocery store and grabbing salt and pepper. We even bring sugar from home for your coffee. You know, got to kind of think through everything. Um, but thinking through everything is going to save you a lot in the end um, versus having to buy all those tiny items in the grocery store. Um, so uh, um, yeah, Jonathan is a great one. Um, I, I agree with him. Don't really flying with kids. They are going to love it. Um, we flew for the first time as a family when I had a three-year-old and two, I guess, two seven-year-olds. We hit um, turbulence at one point, and they're all laughing. They all thought it was hilarious. Um, so they're going to take a lot from your, uh, your take on things. And if you're super stressed, it's going to stress them. So just be chill about the whole thing. Uh, let them have a window seat, even though I personally, it's a hard one for me. I love the window seat, but letting that's going to keep them entertained through all of takeout off and landing. Um, and then for load um, phones, or if you have a tablet, preloading it with any videos that you can so that they can watch those on the plane. Um, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I was showing this to someone this morning. Uh, if you go into your settings on your phone, you could have something called guided access. And guided access is a way to lock down your phone. So you go to settings, you go um, to general and accessibility, or just Google how to turn on guided access on an iPhone. Um, it locks it down. Whatever you have turned on is all that, that kid can do on that iPhone or iPad. And so if I put it on an app, for them to watch a movie, or I put it on an app for them to play with that app, or a Kindle ebook, even they can't leave the Kindle ebook. They're stuck in whatever I put it in unless they have my thumbprint. Um, so, looking into turning that on on an iPad or an iPhone is another great way to keep them entertained if it's a really, really long flight from where you live, Tanya. Um, and that would be a huge one. And watching, like, Google right now, if you have an Android device, Google has 50 free apps that are all games. So looking for some that are age appropriate, obviously you don't need all 50 of them, but starting to watch, you know, we've got a couple months, starting to watch until that flight for free apps that pop up that are fun games and downloading those now um, so that you're ready 
you got the deal when they were free and then we're ready to kind of keep you entertained if we need it. Um, so a good deal for spices. Um, I shared this one on Instagram a few weeks ago to want to, but a lot of folks look past the um, international aisle in a grocery store and just kind of assume that I don't need any of that or they don't know what it is. It's harder to kind of figure it out. Um, but the international aisle, they sell spices that um, Badia, I don't, I'm probably not pronouncing it right. Um, but that's the name brand um, for the spices. So looking at um, that particular brand of spices on the international aisle in almost every grocery store, they still sell garlic powder, the onion powder, the red pepper, all the main spices that we typically use. They sell bigger bottles of them and they're much cheaper than the McCormick and the other brands. They're the same exact products. Um, so that's the biggest way that I can tell you to save on spices. They will go on sale at some stores. Um, so to one, I, I know you're in the Virginia area. If you've got a Harris Teeter, we will see them go on sale. We, we have seen 75 cent coupons recently that would double value. I think they're good. Um, those particular coupons are good, I want to say, until the end of the month. So you've got to kind of jump on them um, a little bit longer. But watching those particular coupons when they come out and then using those on key moments. Buy low in my neck of the woods just had them buy, buy one, get one. Pairing in the coupons, we grabbed spaces for as low as like 25 cents a bottle. Uh, it's obviously not all the spices because some are priced higher and some are much lower. You can parsley you want in the world, but I don't know how many bottles of parsley one person. Um, so when we start to look at other spices, we're going to pay a little bit more, but at least we got them 50% you know, off and then we used a coupon. So watching for those sales if you can, but definitely check out the international aisle on spices. Um, if I could find it fast enough, I would kind of show you Instagram picture, but if you head to Instagram and you look up at Southern Savers and you just kind of look at all the pictures that we've posted recently, um, it was a few weeks back. Um, here we go. I found it. I don't know if you could actually read it though. Uh, an example would be we have like um, oregano in the body bottle is two and a half ounces of oregano and it's two dollars and fifty cents or oregano in the McCormick bottle is 0.75 ounces for two dollars and fifty nine cents um, so in the end going with that other brand um, you know definitely not the McCormick brand is a lot cheaper than with the little tiny McCormick bottle so that's a big one for saving um, and sticking inside uh, all the prices that you would norm all the spices you would normally grab in the same store just a lot cheaper um, for anyone that's in a Publix uh, right now, actually, the same brand, they sell tea. And those tea, boxes of tea, are 59 cents a piece uh, this week in Publix stores where the tea right next to it's like three bucks for the same box of the same type of chamomile tea, 59 cents for Badia um, because it's just an international brand versus the brand that we all know and love. So it's another reason why brand loyalties can end up costing us money. Um, okay, if, and if anyone, before we leave meals, if any of you have um, meals that are your go-to meals, I would love to get other ideas. Um, so chiming in and chat, any kind of like particular, this is our beach kind of vacation meal. We usually do um, a low country boil, which you know some of you may not know what it is, but you basically take a whole bunch of stuff and you throw it in a pot together. The most expensive part of that is the shrimp. Um, but usually we can find sales on that if we kind of watch and then stick them in the freezer. Uh, it's potatoes, corn, uh, sausage, and shrimp all in one big pot together. It feeds a whole bunch of people. But those are those typically are our only rotations, and we eat the same types of things when we travel. So if you all have any other ideas, I'm, I'm always up for adding something to our mix. Um, let's see. Let's talk travel because we haven't really hit on that yet. We talked how to keep the kids entertained for a second but not how to save. Um, in terms of airfare, there is a fun website, um, kayak.com slash explore. So um, you head to kayak.com slash explore. They have a fun tool. And this is one necessarily care when you're going to travel somewhere. You just kind of want to go in an area, but you don't have a specific date. 
Uh, maybe you just have a month. I want to go sometime during the month of September. You can play around with it and you can see where are the cheapest places to go. I actually saw someone recently um, on Facebook at, just in personal friends shout out and say, hey, we want to go somewhere for spring break and we want to fly there because of New York. Um, where would you recommend going? Where where do you think is cheap to go for spring break? Well, this is a really fun way to do that. I can say, I want to go anywhere. This is my airport. I'm leaving. I'll actually show you where the cheapest place you can get. And it may be somewhere crazy. We're all going to go to Danville, Ohio. But the Kayak Explore tool is going to show you that you could get there for 100 bucks a ticket. Um, you know, it's just a fun one to play with. And sometimes we play with it and we don't even plan on going anywhere. Like, hey, I'm just curious. If I wanted to go to England, how much would it cost to get there? I would love to go. I've never been, but I don't have the budget for that right now. Um, but it's a fun tool to play with. So if you're looking for airline options, play. It's also going to help you to explore and discover any airports that might be cheaper to fly into than maybe what you were considering flying into. Uh, another option is that the further out that you book tickets, the cheaper those tickets tend to be. So um, uh, we're not talking like a year out, but usually the best prices on a ticket are at the six month mark. Uh, inside the six month mark, the tickets get, um, they kind of are getting cheaper and then they start to level out and they don't get any cheaper for a long time until very last minute deals and then they get really expensive. So we don't want to buy airline tickets within two weeks of any travel. They're always going to be sky high to grab those tickets. Uh, at the outside of the two week mark on airline tickets, you can find some deals, but generally the best deals are in the six month to three month window. And then from the three month window on, it's about the same price. Um, so jumping in on any airline tickets that you want kind of early in the game, most of us aren't even thinking about where we're going six months out. So that's why the deals tend to be the best. Um, it's worth it in the end, especially if you have specific times that you're wanting to travel or anything like that. Um, uh, oh, that's a great one. So Cheryl saying those Hormel completes, which are like microwave meals. Um, they are super cheap. They're on sale with coupons a lot and they do make for great, just easy lunches. Don't have to think about what anybody's cooking. Um, and Cameron's talking about historic Williamsburg. Uh, would this be like and the deals they offered? Uh, talking about that one in particular, we went there last year. It's an amazingly fun place for kids and adults. So if you haven't been, but site or locations like Colonial Williamsburg, um, even SeaWorld, some of the not Disney type locations, but still like top level locations, do run deals almost like clockwork every year. So if you um, have never done Colonial Williamsburg, but you're contemplating it, uh, they tend to run a Groupon or a living social deal every Black Friday, or they run it directly through their site. So this past Black Friday, it was buy one, get one uh, tickets. That's perfect. I don't have to use them on Black Friday. I just have to buy them on Black Friday, and then I have a whole year to use them. So whites, um, if you have something that you're kind of contemplating even really far out, you can get some really great deals to do that. Black Friday is a good day for any type of vacation hunting, even cruises. People don't think about that. But they run really good Black Friday sales. Um, but that Colonial Williamsburg deal for Black Friday is a huge discount over paying the 30 or 40 bucks a person to get in. Buy one, get one's even better. Um, yes, and Cameron's other one. So we did two weeks. Um, this was Christmas a year ago now. Uh, we did a week at Colonial, or I guess four nights at Colonial Williamsburg, and then headed to D.C. for another four nights. It's about eight, nine days, nine day trip. All of D.C. is completely free. Uh, some of the smaller museums that are new are not. So if you want to go to the International or any of those, you're going to have to pay. But all of Smithsonian is free. All of the national buildings are free. So you can tour the Capitol, the archives, and see the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, all of that, all free. Well, you've paid for it. It should be free. Um, but that vacation alone is a really inexpensive one to take. Uh, and Cameron is very right. And so I wouldn't, you know, if you're contemplating a family trip, I would 
stick that in the back of your mind and like press hard on it. Um, we did a VRBO. We uh, stayed in a really great brownstone. It was like a four bedroom. We shared it with another family that went up there with us. Got very cheap uh, rates. So it came out a family. It was a $400 a night, four bedroom, three bath apartment that was a block behind the Capitals. It was a great location, but 200 bucks a night for a two bedroom apartment basically that we each got our own two bedrooms for our whole families. That's a great price in DC. So you got to kind of compare everything to, to where you're headed and the prices of where you're going. But looking for, in specifically where we were, looking for those deals, Black Friday and Groupon, especially Groupon Living Social for wherever you're headed, you'll be surprised at what you're going to find. Um, even uh, SeaWorld recently ran buy one, get one tickets. Bush Gardens uh, ran, uh, Bush Gardens outside of the Williamsburg area ran a Groupon deal. So we're going to see a lot. Um, oh, and Jonathan's giving you a tip that if you have any friends that live in the area, just count if they book it with, uh, book a duck tour with um, their driver's license versus being a tourist. Uh, so we need to go find a local and just ask them to do something for us if we don't have anyone in the area. Um, okay, if there are any other questions, feel free to chime in. We kind of hit the main key thing to hit on. Um, and again, to recap on the beginning part uh, where we were talking a little bit about shoulder seasons, because that's where kind of the bulk of your savings can come from in picking the right dates to travel in these situations. Uh, hotels are cheaper, cruises are cheaper, all of it. If I go on shoulder seasons or totally off peak, if you're okay with it. You know, if I wanted to go to DC right now, it's cherry blossom season. Everything's blooming and everyone wants to be in DC. Uh, they did not want to see the week between Christmas and New Year's. And that's when we went. It was very, very low uh, tourism. There were, wasn't a single line anywhere we went. But that also means that I'm not going to pay near the amount that I would pay for my room and everything else that I do when I'm there. So that timing is really where the bulk of your savings can come from by picking the best time to go. And a vacation like that, honestly, if your public school system is not willing to let you go, that would just drive me crazy because that's more school than your kids are going to get sitting in a classroom. So doing a vacation in the DC realm during school time to be off shoulder could be totally worth it. Um, spring, uh, let me just hit on that one for a second though. In spring moments for places like DC, for very educational places, going to DC from March on, not good. If you're going to be there with thousands and thousands and thousands of fourth graders and eighth ranking DC trips from all over the East Coast. And if not, uh, I, I don't know if folks come from the West Coast. I can't imagine wanting to travel that far with fourth graders, but uh, it's kind of a crazy place with school groups. So DC or any of the more educational places before the end of the trips are taking their school uh, field trip days. It's like the zoo in our local city. I am not touching the zoo come mid-March until, uh, I don't know, August when school lets back in because it's so crazy. Um, so Jonathan's got a question. Uh, there are no stupid questions. Uh, in terms of just getting into savings money and shopping smart, um, so buying detergent soaps, toothpaste on sale, and buying in bulk. I'd like to know if pasta ever goes bad or what other foodstuffs I should take advantage of on sales. Um, so pasta, Jonathan, does not necessarily go bad, but um, anything that is in the flour realm, um, pastas, rice, bags of flour, all of that, they can get bugs. And once they do, your whole pantry can get bugs. So that's kind of a nightmare of having to throw away all the food that gets these little tiny, um, I don't even know what they're called. I want to call them weevils, but that's probably not what they are. Um, so if you do in the pasta realm, um, rice, any of that, we'll bag it. Um, so it's already in a box. I haven't even opened the box, but take that and put it in a big like Ziploc storage bag or even in a Rubbermaid tote with a lid on it. Um, 
twofold. One, a lot of the times that your pasta gets bugs, it came with bugs from the grocery store and you didn't even realize it. But that way, if it's inside something else, it's bugs stay contained to it and they don't invade everything else that's in my pantry. Um, we do go ahead and grab six weeks worth of um, canned goods, peanut butter, um, any kinds of condiment use, cereals, a lot of those other items um, that are shelf stable items are great to grab sales on and go ahead and get stocked up on. Uh, the only things that I would say are tricky are milk and produce. But pretty much everything else that we grab, I grab in bulk. Uh, and that's kind of the key way to save the most. Uh, and I know you're saying you're not in the States. So um, being in South America, you probably don't have the exact sales systems that we have running. But if you're seeing really great deals on any of those, those would be things that I would grab. I'm not 100% familiar on the sales cycles in South America. But definitely when you get back to the States, you're going to see it like clockwork, very predictable and very easy to follow. Um, but any of those items that are shelf stable items, if you see a great deal, grab it now uh, and be ready to possibly store it in a unique place if, if need be. And Jonathan, if you watch the video, I'll put in a link, um, but I have a workbook um, in the back pages of that workbook, the very last pages of it are how long things are good for based on where you store them. And so looking at um, the back pages, and I'm gonna open a link, so hopefully you don't hear me double talking, it starts to play. Um, just trying to find the link. Um, yeah, okay, so if you head to this page, uh, the workbook is at the bottom of that, so good. Um, as you, um, as you look at that workbook, go all the way to the back, and then um, obviously not the back cover, but come in those two pages, how long things are good for based on where you store them. And you'll notice that some things get moved to the freezer. So uh, little old ladies, I remember my grandmother kept all of her flour and things like that in the freezer because then it couldn't get bugs. So I don't know in South America whether or not that is an issue. I mean, it's an issue in Columbia, South, uh, South Carolina. So I can imagine you're going to have issues um, if you're definitely in a more humid area. So looking at any way to kind of contain that is the biggest way that you would lose those shelf-stable food items because bugs will get into anything if you do have them. Uh, and they're super tiny, so you half the time don't notice them until you've already been cooking and then there's a bug looking at you. That's not pretty. Um, that would be your only concern, and you should be good. Okay, well, I think we had everyone's questions, and we're kind of right on time, so I'm going to go ahead and call us for tonight, uh, and we'll continue to have hangouts every week. We don't really have a need to take a, a break for a while, um, so have a hangout again next week, and that is off topic of savings, and that is time management, management tips. So I'm going to take it with a spin to um, getting into not only speeding up your couponing uh, and speeding up your savings, but maybe it's some time management to, um, for other things around the house. Uh, it, it's funny. It's the number one question that I get from folks when they find out that I run Southern Savers and I have five children is, how do you do it all? Well, sometimes that time management is figuring out what you don't need to do and someone else could. Uh, oh, and Jonathan's uh, giving us all the link for all the um, sites that he shared with us. So I'll stick it up here. Maybe it'll, I don't know how long the URL is. Um, there we go. So anyone that's watching this later, you can see all the links that we mentioned. Um, if you uh, put in that really long um, URL that's up on the screen. So um, we will chat again next week, same time, same place, 8.30 uh, Monday night. And if you guys have any other future topics for Hangouts, um, just let me know too. I'm always open to discussing anything. So you guys have a great week, and I will see you or chat with you next week.